We all know that we are in a church that was in a mode of maintenance. The Archbishop saw that we as a church needed to grow in our ability to reach out and to transform Southeast Michigan and to bring people into an encounter with Jesus. What's the Holy Spirit calling us to do and become in order to be a missionary local church? He insists that Synod 16 not be some program that we put on a shelf and, and, uh, and then move on, but that it's the heart of how we shall be in the Archdiocese of Detroit for the next 30 or 40 or 50 years or beyond. So I think everyone was just united in that desire to see what is God going to do with this? We've prepared for this for a year. We've asked a lot of questions. We've done a lot of thinking about what it is that we want to understand better, directions that we want to go. And now here we are, Lord. What are you going to do? Well, the genesis of the Synod really goes back to St. John Paul II, and he told us to launch out into the deep, that what we needed is a new evangelization, especially in parts of the world that had already received the gospel, but in some ways was suffering from a, what I might call a faith fatigue. I came back to Detroit with that very much in mind and began to think about, well, maybe a Synod is the right way for us as the local church to do that. I consulted with some canonists to understand what a synod is about, what the church expects, but more importantly, I consulted with the Presbyteral Council and a number of uh, people in the Archdiocese leaders, and they said, yeah, this is a good way to go. The goal is important, the new evangelization, and a synod uh, is a really powerful medium uh, to advance that goal. And so, the synods are very rare uh, in the essence because they're a very special occasion. Uh, they are something on the diocesan level that we use to help consult uh, the, the priest, uh, the laity, uh, members from all different walks of life to help see what is the Holy Spirit saying. The Vigil of Pentecost in 2014, that was a turning point. The Archbishop said, I do not assert I affirm the Holy Spirit has heard our prayer for a new Pentecost. We uh, decided that we would pray a year for the new evangelization. And I think in some ways that was one of the most important lead ups to the synod process. Because if we're going to be as we wanted to be, agents for the discernment of the Holy Spirit, uh, we needed to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. One of the critical parts of that was the Mass of Pardon. And the Mass of Pardon was a time when we really could address the ways in which we as a church not only had experienced wounds ourselves in which we were individually wounded, but the ways in which, unfortunately, we as a church have wounded others. It was pretty striking to see all the bishops flat on their face as Deacon Huber Sanders prayed over us. Then we really focused on, okay, how do we, now being emptied, come into a position where we can best encounter Christ and be in communion with him and hear clearly? And we did that through a series of about 28 to 30 three-day missions where we were in adoration nightly before the monstrous, as a people throughout the diocese, so that we could hear a clear word, again, not shaded by our own opinions or, or our own agendas. I couldn't believe that I was chosen to be one of the 400 people attending. So I felt a commitment uh, to prepare myself spiritually. We were in contact by the archdiocese frequently. We were asked, to go to confession, we were asked to go to Mass daily, we were asked to pray the Rosary, we were asked to pray the Synod prayer. One of the major aspects in bringing people together 
and was very important in discerning who would be a member was the fact that we instructed everybody that we didn't want anybody to come with an agenda. When we began, what I most remember is a sense of gratitude that God had done a lot of wonderful things to bring us to that day. And I had gratitude that we had come to it and uh, a, a sense of expectation about what he would do. It wasn't like we simply convened one weekend in November and said, you know, now we're going to uh, hold the Synod. All the working up to the Synod gave a great understanding of really the momentous nature of what we were doing, of the importance of what we were doing, that we weren't gonna mess around anymore, that we were gonna go after what Jesus wants us to do in the Archdiocese of Detroit, and we meant business. So when we arrived that first uh, afternoon for the convocation, the beginning of the Synod that weekend, there was such a palpable sense of the presence of the Holy Spirit there among us. It was interesting because there were people from all different walks of life in the Archdiocese of Detroit, a great representation of you know, who we are in the Archdiocese. There were a lot of clergy, there were religious, there were lay people from all over, you know, urban, suburban, rural parishes in the Archdiocese, people from other faith traditions that had been invited to come to the Synod. It was amazing that all of us were there for the same reason. And all of us were there to be doing the same thing. So when we saw each other on that day, it was like we were getting ready for this together. And now we are finally together. The one visual memory I have is of us going from the meeting room in the hotel in a procession uh, up Washington Boulevard for the Mass in uh, St. Aloysius. A saying, you know, the Catholic Church is, here comes everybody. And I thought, well, that's what we're saying to the city of Detroit, uh, here comes everybody. I remember our Bishop Vignora was really excited. He was, his expression, his voice was full of joy. Outside of the hotel, there were people praying, holding the rosaries. People were holding signs, asking the Holy Spirit to come for the Holy, for, for the Synod. And he's the leader on the journey. He's the one who's leading us. He's the one who's shepherding us, who's teaching us. And we really had that sense of, he prayed, he discerned over a period of years, and that led to this moment, to this Synod. And there we were embarking on, on this process. I was very grateful to hear the report back from uh, the various groups that deliberated on the Synod propositions. I made it my business to listen for what I thought that God was saying through what they said. And uh, I thought that was a great blessing for me to receive that and to be able to share it back with the Synod participants. You know, the Synod had such a buzz about it if you were, if you were present for the, uh, for the sessions. Um, people, were, people were excited and they had an idea that something new was happening. And so it was almost, the room was almost vibrating. And I think in, in part, that's the movement of the Holy Spirit. But of course, going back into the parish, things have to calm down a little bit and return to the new normal that the Holy Spirit has prepared for us in the, in the Synod. And While it was palpable, there were, there were things we didn't know yet. There was energy and there was joy and there was hope and uh, I think a, a tremendous gratitude for being participants in the Senate, but we didn't know where it was all gonna go yet, so there was also a feeling of anticipation. I think the biggest takeaway is there was a renewed hope. There was a renewed um, understanding that God intended to act in the Archdiocese of Detroit. When I read 
the pastoral letter 2017 when it was released it was like oh my gosh everything is there everything that happened in that weekend is there i think the pastoral letter unleash the gospel was very important to be a kind of testament to the synod it's meant to gather the graces of the synod together to put them into words so that we have them uh, going forward. I found the letter so hopeful in that we have an archbishop who leads in faith. I think Unleash the Gospel was able to communicate well the drama that, uh, that we're all undergoing and that God desires for us, God's plan. You know, not just for something far off like 2,000 years ago in Palestine, but something today that the Holy Spirit wants to do with ordinary people like me and you. You know, starting with the first things, that this is God's work, really. It's not, it's not ours. It's ours to cooperate with him, but this is fundamentally his work. And the primary evangelizer is the Holy Spirit. We are called to, to surrender and to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, and he'll take care of the rest. I mean, it was just, there were so many elements of the letter that I love. Um, the good and the bad habits, his reflection on the things going on in our, our world at this time, the challenges that we're going to face, but again, a call a, a, again and again to trust, to abandon ourselves, and we'll be fine. It was beautiful. What Unleash the Gospel is asking us to do is not only share in Christ's identity, but also sharing in his mission. I think that changes everything because we begin to live our lives differently. We live our lives in the backdrop of hope. Uh, and then people were absorbing the letter and we started to get to work. There were a lot of specific charges within the pastoral letter uh, for the faithful, whether they be councils or schools or families or the curia or parishes specifically. So folks started to dig in and understand what was their call and how there was, there was going to be a response to that call. The curia, for instance, was reorganized to focus specifically on mission. And so the, the thought was, let's bring the work of the synod to the local parishes and a whole endeavor started there. How do we go on mission at the parish level? Heart speaks to heart. That's where the, that's where the work happens. You know, one of the things you hear in kind of uh, parish life is that, well, we've always done it this way. I think Synod 16 has given us permission to reimagine that, to not, to not settle for that. I've seen great evidence of signs and wonders, healings. There's a beautiful heart that has come out of, of this work lately. Not just, not just the intentional work of the Synod, but the clear work of the Spirit, because people are more accustomed to calling on the Spirit, I think. Well, the journey since the letter came out has been one of trying to implement the recommendations of the Synod. As you start a journey, you have an idea where you're gonna go, but things happen along the way. Uh, COVID, for example, is a very significant uh, change in the life of the diocese. And so we've had to uh, pivot, but we're continuing to have the same goal which is the missionary transformation of the diocese so that more people will come to know Christ and his love. Without the synod, I don't think uh, the diocese, we would have had the vision about uh, moving forward with families of parishes as a way to have ourselves organized for the sake of the new evangelization. This whole, this whole experience, the evolution of being able to be involved has made me a better disciple. It's brought me it's brought me closer to the Lord it's it's reminded me of my um, obligation and in the beauty of surrender the synod for me personally has borne great fruit in making me very aware of my need to lead all of us in this transformation of making mission uh, the touchstone for what we do and that's going to be the, the real test of our time are we able to evangelize outside of the church and not just within the parish? Sure, I think, I think one of the en enduring fruits from the entire synod process is coming to a new awareness as a diocese, as individual members of the laity, that 
we have a role to play, each, each and every one of us. Moving forward on the basis of the Synod, I'd like to see us become ever more confident in this work of evangelization, uh, to make it day by day just part of the, the ordinary course of what we're involved, who we are, and I'd like to see more people come to Christ. Uh, the grace of the Synod is to have clearly committed the, the local church of the Archdiocese of Detroit to be a church on mission. The hope for the future is that we will continue to be faithful to that vision and to measure everything that we're engaged in by that vision. And I have great confidence in the omnipotence of the Holy Spirit. He will bring good fruit if we simply try to cooperate. Might not be the fruit we expect, but it will be good fruit.